the license of my lab domain controller server 2022 was about to expire in a few days. I didn't want to lose all my Active Directory settings, so I decided to install a new Windows Server 2022, promote it as a secondary domain controller, and move everything to this new server. Then, demote the current domain controller and get rid of it. Here's what you can find in this video. How to install the Active Directory role on a Server 2022. How to add a secondary domain controller to an existing domain how to install and configure the DNS and DHCP roles, failover DHCP to a secondary server, check which server holds the operations master's roles, transfer the operations master's roles to a new server, adjust DHCP settings to use the new server, how to demote a domain controller and uninstall all the Active Directory related roles, and much, much more. Please subscribe. The first thing you need to do is rename the new server and add it to the domain as a member. Open Server Manager and click Local Server. Click here to open the System Properties window. Click Change, click this, enter the domain name and press Enter or click OK. Enter the credentials of a user with permissions to add computers to the domain and press Enter or click OK. Click OK to close the welcome message and click OK to close the restart message. Click Close to close the system properties window. Click Restart now to restart the computer. After the computer has been restarted, let's install the Active Directory role, the DNS and DHCP roles. Open Server Manager and click Local Server. Scroll all the way down, click Tasks and click Add Roles and Features. Now before you dismiss this screen by clicking next, note these tasks that you need to complete. I haven't done this and will show you what happens if you don't. This server is currently configured with an IP address provided by the DHCP. Make sure this option is selected and click next. Make sure the correct server is selected and click next. The roles you need to install for this server to eventually become the main and only domain controller are Active Directory Domain Services, DHCP Server, and DNS Server. Check this and click Add Features. Now, check this and click Add Features. As I mentioned before, you only see this message if your server doesn't have a static IP address. Click Continue. Check this and click Add Features. You get the same message for the DNS Server role installation. Click Continue. Click Next to proceed. At this point, you don't need to install any additional features. Click Next to proceed. This page provides links to information on Microsoft's online Active Directory services. Click Next to proceed. This is a reminder regarding the configuration of a static IP address and planning the DHCP subnets and scopes. You can skip the planning step since you are going to use what you already have in the current DHCP server. Click Next. This screen explains that the DNS information will be integrated into Active Directory. You'll see later that you don't really need to do anything with the DNS besides installing it. Click Next to proceed. To automate the process, click this to have the server automatically restart if needed. Approve by clicking Yes and click Install. You can close this window and do something else while the roles are being installed. I like to leave this window open because at the end of the installation process, you are presented with links to the next steps. Before you proceed with this step, now is a good time, if you haven't done it yet, to configure a static IP address to this server. Several pings allow you to gather more information. I needed to know the IP address of the main domain controller and to see if this address is available. To configure a static IP address, right-click here and then here. Now click this and then click this. Right-click your Ethernet adapter and click Properties. Double-click IPv4, click this and assign the new IP address, subnet mask and default gateway. Now click this to configure a DNS server. Let me show you what happens if you enter an incorrect DNS IP address here. I do it so you don't have to. Also, it's interesting to see what happens. 
it should eventually be the IP address of the current domain controller. Click OK and click OK again. Close all the windows to proceed. Click here to start the promotion process of this server to a domain controller. Make sure this option is selected. If you click next now, you might get this message. As you can see, I am logged in to the server as a local administrator and not the domain administrator. If you see this message, click here, add a domain administrative credentials and click OK. Click next to proceed. Now this is the interesting part. Because of the incorrect DNS settings, the domain controller for the domain cannot be contacted. If you click this link, you'll get a message that is basically leading you to the configuration issue. Correct this by opening the Ethernet adapter configuration and entering the correct DNS IP address. Now, click Next to proceed. Choose if you want this server to be a global catalog. To get more information on global catalog, click the link above. Type the directory services restore password, verify it and click Next. Ignore this message for now and click Next. You don't need to make any changes here. Click Next to proceed. Unless you have a specific reason to change these, leave the defaults and click Next. Review your selected options and click Next. After seeing the success message here and this amazing green symbol, click Install. If you do nothing here, the server will be automatically restarted. Restart your server or allow it to restart automatically. Note that you are now signing in as the domain administrator. Just a reminder that domain controllers do not have local users. After the restart, open Server Manager and check the post-deployment configuration here. Click here to complete the DHCP configuration. You can make any changes here that fit your needs. In my case, I'm using the domain administrator to authorize this DHCP server. Make your choice and click Commit. Note the results of the authorization and click Close. Now you can open the DHCP to check the settings. As you can see, the server is authorized as the Active Directory DHCP, but has no configuration. The next step would be to configure the server as a failover. If you right-click IPv4 and click Configure Failover, you'll see that this option is not available. You need to configure it on the source DHCP server. Right-click here and click Add Server. Click here, choose the active DHCP server and click OK to add it to the list. Expand the server, right-click the scope and click Configure Failover. Click Next to proceed. Click Add Server, then click here. Choose the new server from the list and click OK. Click Next to proceed. Because my purpose is to eventually use only the new server, these settings are not really important to me. But if you intend to keep both servers and use them as failovers, check these settings and adjust them. Choose a shared secret password and click Next. This is your last chance to review the settings. Click Finish to complete the configuration. Make sure you only see success messages here and click Close. Now, if you refresh the view, you'll see the new settings on the target server. Now, let's check the DNS settings. In Server Manager, click Tools and click DNS. Once you add the other DNS server, you can compare between the two and see that they are identical. No additional configuration changes are required. Let's identify which domain controller holds any of the Active Directory Operations Master's roles. Open a CMD window on a domain controller and type the following command. There are five Operations Masters in the domain, and as you can see here, all of them are running on DC1. In my scenario, I am adding another domain controller to this domain and would like to transfer these roles to the new server. Please note that I am transferring the roles and not seizing them. This process can only be done if the current roles holder server is active. If the current roles holder server failed, you will need to perform a different procedure. 
there are several ways to transfer operations master roles. In this video, I am showing you a visual way, which doesn't require any complex commands. Start by opening the server manager, click tools and then active directory users and computers. Make sure that you are connected to the domain controller to which you want to transfer the roles. Right click the domain name and click operations masters. Here are three of the five roles you need to transfer. Here is the current owner of this role and here is the target domain controller. Make sure the information is correct and click change. Verify your choice and click yes. Click OK to close the success message. The same actions need to be performed for the PDC and the infrastructure roles. Click the tab, verify the current role holder and the target, click change and verify. Click close after all three have been transferred. This leaves you with two more roles. You can close Active Directory Users and Computers, click Tools and click Active Directory Domains and Trusts. Verify that the target domain controller is chosen here, right click it and click Operations Master. From here you can perform the same actions as you previously did to transfer the Operations Master role. Verify the source and target servers, click Change, verify again and close. To transfer the last role, open a CMD window and type this command to register the schema management DLL. This DLL is not registered by default. Click OK to close the success message. Type MMC to open the Microsoft Management Console. Click File and click Add Remove Snap In. Choose the Active Directory schema here, click Add and click OK. Make sure the target server is selected here. If it's not, like in this case, right click and click Change Active Directory Domain Controller. Click here, choose the target domain controller and click OK. This message basically tells you that the selected server doesn't have the schema role and you will not be able to perform any changes to the schema. Click OK to proceed. Right click here and click Operations Master. And just like before, verify the target server, click Change, Verify and Close. Now all that's left to do is go back to the CMD window and run the query command to verify the new owner of the roles. Now let's adjust the settings for the DHCP server. Currently the DHCP settings use DC1 which is on the way out and replaced by DC2. The first thing you need to do in this step is to get the IP address of DC2. After you get the IP address, open Server Manager, click Tools and click DHCP. Make sure that you are connected to the new server here. Extend IPv4, extend the scope and click Scope Options. Double click the DNS servers option, click remove, change the IP address to the new server and click add. Click OK to close this window. Note that in my case this change had to be done under the scope options here. It is also possible that this change will need to be done under the server options here. Depends on the DHCP setup. After this change has been implemented, all the clients receiving an IP address from the DHCP server will receive their DNS server option pointing to the new server. After all the hard work you've done so far, it's now time to demote the original domain controller and tell it goodnight. Then put it to sleep with the rest of the old and expired computers. Or you could just reinstall it. Open Server Manager and click Local Server. Scroll all the way down Click Tasks and click Remove Roles and Features. Admire this screen before you proceed. This is not a very popular screen. How often do you get to remove roles from a server? Let me know in the comments below. After your admiration is complete, click Next. Make sure the correct server is selected and click Next. Check this option well. You don't want to remove roles from the incorrect server that would be bad. Uncheck this and click Remove Features. You'll then get this message, basically telling you that this domain controller needs to be demoted before this role can be removed.
Click here to initiate the demotion process. If you are not currently logged in as administrator, click here to provide administrative credentials and then click next. This screen tells you what is currently installed on this server and will be impacted by demoting this server. Click here and then click next. As I previously mentioned, domain controllers do not have local users, but since after the demotion, the server will no longer be a domain controller, it needs a password for the local administrator. Provide one and click next. Review the options described here and click demote. The server will automatically be restarted. After entering the domain administrator password, you get this message. This is because the server has a static IP and the DNS which was previously installed on this server. What you need to do now is log in locally. Click other user, type dot backslash and then the user. This will log you in as local administrator. Now is a good time to correct the DNS settings. Right click here and click open network and internet settings. Click this, right click this and click properties. Now that the server is no longer a domain controller or a DNS server, you can just assign it with an IP address from the new DHCP server. Double click IPv4, click this and then this. Click OK and OK again. Now close all the windows to proceed and restart the computer to implement the new IP address and login to the domain. Once the computer has been restarted, enter the domain credentials to login. Now you can go ahead and remove the roles. Open server manager and click local server. Scroll down, click tasks and click remove roles and features. You already admired this screen. Click next to proceed. Verify the correct server is selected and click next. Uncheck this and click remove features. Uncheck this and do the same. And uncheck this and you know the drill. Click next to proceed. You are not removing any features, so click next here. Click remove to initiate the removal process. Click close to proceed. Note that you need to restart the server to complete the roles removal. After the restart, your server is just a server. In a production environment, this would be a good time to install the DHCP role on a new server to avoid at all costs having only one of them in your domain. But this is not what I need in my situation. In this case, I want to show you how to remove the failover settings with what is now a non-existing DHCP server. Open Server Manager, click Tools and click DHCP. Here you can see the indicator that this scope has a failover setting. Right click it and click Properties. Now click the failover tab here and click Delete. Click OK to confirm deletion and look for the success message here. Note this message and click Continue. If you do this while the partner server is still active and has the DHCP role running, you will only see success messages in this screen. But because the partner server is no longer with us, you see these errors which you can gracefully ignore. Click Close, then click OK and refresh. After a quick inspection, you can see that all the configuration settings and list IP addresses are here. This server is now functioning as an independent DHCP server. Remember, in a production environment, to always have at least two domain controllers and two DNS and DHCP servers in each domain. If you liked this video, you should watch this video next.